الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونؤمن به توكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اياكم والشهد فان ما حلق من كان قبلكم بالشهد امرهم بالبخل فبخلوا وامرهم بالقطيعه فقطعوا وامرهم بالفجور ففجر The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us. He said, Iyakum, Iyakum wa shuh. Beware of greed. Fa inna wa halaka man kana qablakum bi shuh. Because the nations before you were destroyed because of their greed. Amarahum bin bukhal wa bakhil. Their greed pushed them to be miserly. And so they were stingy. Wa amarahum bil qati'ah. They agreed to push them to break family ties, and they did so. And they agreed to push them to commit immoral acts, and they did so. In this hadith found in Abu Dawood and graded as authentic by the scholars of hadith, Rasulullah is warning us about a very important and dangerous disease of the heart. Greed. Last week we spoke about the importance of self-care of the soul. The importance of keeping our heart and soul free from that which corrupts it. One of the corruptors of the soul that is dominant in modern society and upon which a lot of modern ideologies are built upon is greed. Greed in all of its types. Greed means that you have an excessive and unhealthy desire for something. An excessive and unhealthy desire for something. You see, it, it's natural to desire money. It's natural to desire a spouse. It's natural to desire a nice house, a nice car. But when it becomes an obsession, when all you want is more and more and more, you start going down a very dark and dangerous path. And the world we live in, a lot of the ideologies that dominate and shape this world are ideologies that come out of greed, that are built upon greed. If you look at the concept of consumerism, the idea that you should be constantly consuming products, that people are constantly trying to sell you new products. You just got a phone, they're trying to sell you a better phone. You just got a car, they're trying to sell you a better car. Right? There's always more and more and more. This is a type of greed. This is an entire ideology built upon greed. Hedonism, the idea that you should always go after what you desire, is built upon greed. And this greed has worked its way into every aspect of our life. If you look at the marketing or advertising industry, it's built upon targeting the greed within us and amplifying it. You know, 20 or 30 years ago, it was bad enough with the billboards and the, and the television adverts. Now it's 10 times worse, worse, maybe 100 times worse, because now you have targeted adverts on your phone. What they do is the AI scans through all of your likes, all of your interests, all of your searches, and gives you advertisements about the things that you are thinking about, the things that you desire, and make you greedy for more. So you buy a new phone, and you immediately getting adverts for the latest phone in that series. Right? You buy a new car, you're immediately getting adverts for, the new, for newer and better cars. There's this constant play to get us to buy more and more and more. Now we'll take a step back, and I remind you that Islam is a balanced and moderate way of life. Islam doesn't tell us that we have to be poor. Islam doesn't tell us we have to give up this dunya. It simply teaches us to live a balanced and healthy lifestyle. That as Muslims, we should work hard. We should, especially the men, should provide for their families. You should work hard and provide for your families. And we should have goals, we should have vision, we should be working our way up in life through hard work. All of this is part of being a good Muslim. But also, also part of being a good Muslim is that at the end of the day, 
whatever you made for that day after working hard, whether it's a lot or a little, you say Alhamdulillah, you are grateful for it. Right? You are grateful and content with your destiny for that day. The next day you try again and you work hard again. And whatever you receive, you are grateful for it. This keeps us in check. This keeps us balanced. On one hand, we work hard. We are not lazy. On the other hand, we are also filled with gratitude and contentment at the end of every day. This is the Islamic way to go through life. And yes, there's nothing wrong with desiring moving up a level in life. There's nothing wrong with desiring to have a nice house or to have a nice car. But it's important to keep yourself in check and not to reach a level where you're just always looking at what's next. You're always looking at what's more, right? Because this is what happens today. What happens today is you buy a nice house or a nice car and immediately your mind goes, oh, that car is better, but this house is better. And you're so obsessed with getting a better car or a better house, you don't take the time to enjoy what you have. You don't take the time to appreciate what you have. And so you are never fulfilled. So Islam teaches us a balanced way. It teaches us to work hard, it teaches us to have aspiration, but it also teaches us to have the waqal, to be accept our destiny, and to be content. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against greed in many hadiths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us against greed in many of the stories of the Qur'an. <coughs> the hadith we started this khutbah with, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in that hadith that greed is one of the causes of destructions of the past nations. If you look at the nations that were destroyed, they were greedy for different things. They were amongst them those that were greedy for wealth. They were amongst them those that were greedy for power. They were amongst them those who were greedy for immoral desires. And all of these are different types of greeds that corrupt society. And all of these greeds are, are found in our society. Every type of greed is found in modern society. And the Prophet told us that greed destroyed these nations. And to destroy us too if we don't keep it in check. And he shows us in this hadith three ways in which greed corrupts you. Three ways in which greed corrupts you. If you don't check your heart, if you don't get rid of greed, if you don't keep your worldly desire under control, this hadith says there are three ways that it will corrupt you. Number one, it will make you a miser, it will make you stingy. A greedy person doesn't like to share. A greedy person doesn't care about others. A greedy person only cares about piling up more and more and more. Number two, it says that greed will command you to break family ties. Greed will command you to break family ties. Think about it. What's the main causes of the breaking of family ties in our communities? Fighting over inheritance, fighting over businesses. It's fighting over money, right? Greed for wealth causes people to break family ties. And number three, greed will push you into immorality. If you cannot find a halal way to get what you want, and you allow, allow your greed to consume you, then you will look for haram ways to get what you want. And we are seeing this also in modern society. Another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns us that there's two types of greed that never ends. If we don't keep them in control, they never end. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يَحْرَبُ بْنَ Adam, But the ship will mean holds the time. He says, the son of Adam grows old, but two of his desires never end, right? Everybody grows old, but there's two types of desire or greed that doesn't grow old. It stays in your heart for life. What are these two types of greed that stay with you for life? He said, Hirsu ala al wa hirsu ala al Being greedy for money and being greedy for a long life. So the Prophet said, no matter how old a person gets, they always want to live longer. And they always want to make more money. And so the Prophet is warning us here that there is no end to these desires. You have to keep them in check. It's, it's, not, it's not something you outgrow with age. Right? You don't outgrow greed. If you don't learn the internal mechanisms of keeping your greed in check, then it stays with you for life. Even at the old age, you're still greedy for more. And a third hadith, the Prophet warns us that greed is something that cannot be satisfied. Greed is something that cannot be satisfied. 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كان لابن آدم وديان من مال لبدغ ثالثا ولا يملع جوف ابن آدم إلا التراب ويتوب الله على من تاب The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the son of Adam if Allah had to give him two valleys full of gold he will desire a third valley Listen again to the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said that human nature is such that if Allah had to give you two values of gold, you will desire a third. Meaning, there is no end to greed. You become a millionaire, you want to become a multi-millionaire. You become a multi-millionaire, you want to become a billionaire. You become a billionaire, you want to become the richest man in the world. Right? There is no end to it. No matter how many valleys of gold you get, there's always the next one. There's always something that somebody else has that you want. What satisfied greed? Where does it end? The Prophet ﷺ said, Nothing stops a person from desiring more except dirt. What does he mean by dirt? It means when you bury it, they're throwing the dirt over you. Debt. That's what it means. It's an analogy for debt. When we die and we put in the graves, we've all been there, right? You the graveyard and we're all taking the shovels and we're putting the dirt over the body. He said that's the only time when greed stops. All of these hadiths are warning us that within us and within our souls, there is something that if we don't keep it under control, it can consume us. It can dominate us. Why is this bad? What does greed do to us that makes it something so dangerous that the Prophet ﷺ warned about it over and over again. I'll just mention five of the harms of greed. There are many, but there are five harms of allowing greed to dominate your heart. Number one, if you are greedy, you will never be content. And if you are never content, you will never experience inner peace. Greed and contentment are opposites. The greedy person only sees what other people have. The content person is grateful for what he has. If you want contentment, you have to let go of greed. They cannot coexist in one heart. And so greed robs you of contentment. Greed robs you of inner peace. Greed robs you of enjoying what you have right now. You can't enjoy what you have because you want something else. Number two, greed forces you, especially in the modern culture, it forces you to live beyond your means. It forces you to live beyond your means. So if somebody is greedy and they cannot afford the things that they are greedy for, the modern world has built an entire sinful system, the riba-based system, to keep you, to give you the purchasing power to buy anything you want with some long-term payment plans. And when people's greed dominates their heart, you find that even though they can't afford it, they drive cars that they can't afford, they live in houses that they can't afford, they go for vacations that they can't afford, with the idea is, oh, I'll pay for it later. I'll pay for it later. It's a very stupid way to live your life. Right? To do all of these things and say, I'll pay for it later, it, it, it shows a lack of intelligence. And it shows a domination of desires over intellect. Living beyond your means is one of the worst ways you can oppress yourself. You are literally putting yourself in a difficult situation, one you could have easily avoided. Linked to that, the third harm of greed. The third harm of greed is linked to living beyond your means. And what is that? You get trapped in a cycle of debt. You are always owing somebody something. This is a result of greed. When you are greedy, and you're always borrowing, borrowing on credit cards, and you're always buying things on loan, and you have all these different long-term payments to make out, you will always be owing somebody something. And when you are owing people money, you can't sleep at night. When you are owing people money, it plays on your heart. This is something that has made a lot of people very depressed in the modern world. The idea that they can never, they can never escape the cycle of debt. And again, the system has been designed like this. Make you greedy, make you want something, make you buy it on credit, make you spend the rest of your life paying it off, so you don't ever have time to think, you don't ever have time to worship Allah, you don't ever have time to do anything else with your life. The fourth danger and harm that comes from being greedy 
is that you neglect that which is more important. You neglect that which is more important. You see, as a Muslim, it's important to make money, to provide for your family, to buy halal things. But there are things that are more important. What's more important than making money? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, your family. Spend time with your family. Have a good relationship with your family. Be there for your family. Number three, your community. Spend time in the community. Give back to the community. Be involved in the community. But when people are greedy, they don't have time for Allah, they don't have time for their family, and they don't have time or money for the community. Life just becomes about work and money, and that becomes all there is to it. That becomes a person's entire obsession, the entire life. And it's very scary to see that our society is moving in this direction. That people no longer have a sense of community and people have no longer have a sense of family. Life is just work and bills and work and bills. And there is never a life outside of work. This is a very dangerous way for humans to live. When you don't have friends, you don't have community, you don't have family, it's just work and just money. Then life is all about that only. And that takes us to the fifth harm of unchecked greed. The fifth harm of unchecked greed is that you start to build your identity around your possessions. You know, you get people out there who their identity, their identity is, I own this type of car, or I own this type of handbag, or I own this designer brand. So your identity is not a worship of Allah, your identity is not your family, your identity is not your culture, your identity is possessions. What kind of a shallow identity is that? So greed is dangerous. And greed is built into the system that we live in. And so throughout history, people had to fight their nafs to make sure that greed doesn't consume them. In the modern world, we have to fight twice as hard to make sure that greed doesn't consume us. Because all around us, on our phones, on our computers, on the billboards, on the television, there are adverts encouraging us to be greedy and greedy and greedy. And we have to keep ourselves in check. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts to our da'wana and alhamdulillah wa min alameen. Alhamdulillah wa ahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man ta'ala bi abada wa abad wa qala Allah ta'ala fi Qur'an al-Majid wa la tatamanna ma faddal Allah bihi ba'dakum ala ba'd. How do you check your heart? How do you prevent greed from corrupting your soul and dominating you? I'll just mention five brief points, and inshallah, if we apply these five things, we can work on purifying our souls of greed. Number one is self awareness. Be aware of the problem, be aware of society, be aware of what's going on in the world, be aware of the effects it has on you. This is why I encourage people to study the psychology of marketing. Not to apply it, but to know when somebody's applying it on you. Because a lot of the psychology of marketing today is just mental manipulation. Manipulating you into being greedy for things that you don't need to make you think that you need it. So it's important to be aware. Self-awareness helps you to fight this. Link to self-awareness, number two, muhasaba. Check yourself. We spoke about this last week when we spoke about self-care for the soul. You need to constantly check yourself. Every single one of us every day need to look inside and say, are there any spiritual diseases in my heart that I need to work on purifying my heart from? And then you need to take steps to do so. So you need to constantly check your heart to make sure that greed is not dominating and not overcoming your good desires. A third way of fighting greed is to practicing gratitude and contentment. Gratitude and contentment. What do you mean by gratitude? Look at all of the good things in your life. For every blessing in your life, say Alhamdulillah. For every blessing in your life, say Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah for your blessings. And what is contentment? Contentment means appreciate what you have. Appreciate what you have and don't always desire the next thing. Right? You have a reliable car, Alhamdulillah. You don't have to be obsessed with getting a better car. You have a house that's a beautiful home where you have a loving family in there. Say Alhamdulillah and be content. Don't always look for a bigger house. A bigger house is not necessarily a better house. Right? It's always about where's the home, where's the love. That's what makes it a home. Right? Where the love is. 
learn to be content, and perhaps we'll do a separate khutbah on how to be content, on the different steps taught in the books of this gear to nafs on how to build contentment. Number four, the Prophet warned us, don't look at those who have more than you, look at those who have less than you. So we need to shift our gaze. You know, you say you need to lower your gaze. Lower your gaze on the possessions of others. Don't keep looking saying, oh, this person has a fancier car than me, this person has you know, a bigger house than me, this person has more wives than me. Right? People do this and they get jealous. This, be content with what you have. Lower your gaze. Don't think, oh, this person got something, I want what he has. No. Allah has decided who gets what. And there's always someone who will have more than you. There's always someone who will have something better than you, something shinier than what you have. Don't look at what others have. Focus on what you need and what your family needs. And the first thing, and perhaps you'll do a separate good part on this, there is a modern practice that actually ties into Islamic teachings. Right? A modern practice to counter consumerism that actually ties into Islamic teachings. And that's called minimalism. Minimalism means try to live off as little as you can. Don't own too many things. Don't have too many possessions. Try to minimize the amount of possessions you have. It's a very interesting philosophy and it actually ties in very closely with how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Sahaba themselves lived their lives. So perhaps another day we will focus on the Islamic uh, understanding of this topic. But I want to close off with one verse of the Quran. And what's interesting about this verse is it's actually talking about gender roles, right? Allah is telling uh, men and women not to desire what the other has. But we can take it also on a broader uh, a broader perspective and say don't desire what anybody else has, right? So there's a specific meaning of the verse and the general meaning of the verse. The specific meaning of the verse is when it comes to the role of the husband and wife, both have their role in the family, it's different from each other, neither should desire to be like the other or to have what the other has. And the, and the general meaning of the verse is whatever gifts Allah has given another human being, don't desire it. Because Allah knows best who deserves what and who needs what and who will benefit from what. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوا مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدِ Do not desire what Allah has blessed someone over others. Do not desire what Allah has blessed someone over others. It's a very important concept. Right? And perhaps another day again we'll go to this in more detail what the verse is actually talking about in terms of gender roles. But take this as a general concept. Allah has given someone something that you don't have. Whether it's strength, whether it's beauty, whether it's intelligence, whether it's wealth, whether it's possessions, whether it's a bigger family, whatever it is. If Allah has given someone something that you don't have, don't desire what they have. Focus on what you have and how you can improve that spiritually, how you can be, do better with what you have. Because Allah knows best how to distribute His risk. Now Allah may have given someone something that He did not give to you, because that thing may have been a test for you and a blessing for them. Allah knows best which test each of us can pass and He gives us accordingly. So maybe Allah has given somebody else more wealth than you because that wealth would have been a test for you. Or maybe Allah gave somebody else more fame than you because that fame would have been a test for you. Now Allah knows best how to distribute His blessing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from greed, to protect us from the diseases of the heart, to keep us in check and to make us righteous. Rabbana adina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaba al-nar subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati yamma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you.